the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Every lifted voice apart 
the throne of grace Majesty before my eyes I'll let it take my breath away A million angels fall Face down on the floor All to echo holy time together. We pray for our speakers and for our athletes. Lord, we just pray over them and help us to learn more about you through them. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and pray and uh, we're going to jump in. It sounds like a lot of you guys already know these people, but uh, we're going to get to know them a little bit better. Uh, So Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I just pray that you bless uh, our conversation and our time, uh, and everything we say will be glorifying and honoring to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what I wanted you to do is just go down, uh, and you guys introduce yourself, uh, name, what year you are, major, what sport you play, and maybe like what position in that sport. 
Hello, my name is Caitlin Millett. I'm a sophomore. I play volleyball. I'm a right side, and I'm a secondary ed for literature major. Woo. Yeah, you guys can cheer. That's right. My name is Josh. Um, <laughs> I am uh, on the soccer team, if you couldn't tell. I am a right wing slash left wing. My major is ministry leadership, and I am a senior. Woo. Hi, I'm Colby. Um, I'm on the women's soccer team. I am a center back. Um, I am a senior and a counseling psychology major. Um, I'm Jeremiah Campbell. I'm on the baseball team. I play outfield. I'm a junior and I major in sports management. All right. Woo. All right, Jeremiah, you're the only baseball guy up here. So Dodgers or Yankees? Dodgers. All right, fair enough. Any Dodgers fans? No. All right, it got really quiet there. So you're Yankees fans? No. No. All right, so it's neither. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, so what I want you guys to do is we're going to just have some fun questions before we jump into the serious questions. Uh, so now I've realized you're not a Dodgers fan, it seems like. You're not a Yankees fan. So just go down. What's your favorite sports team? Uh, Baseball-wise, I'd just probably say the Braves. Braves. There we go. I like that. Um, I would have to say the U.S. Women's National Team or the North Carolina Courage. Okay. Ooh. Man City. <laughs> I would have to say the Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah! All right, there we go. Are you from Ohio? Okay, fair enough. She's from Ohio, so that's fine. We can, we can bless her for that. Um, all right, so you guys have been playing uh, for several years. Your sport here at college, I'm assuming you played in high school. You didn't just show up at college and be like, I want to be a college athlete. That typically isn't how it happens. Um, so, what's your favorite memory from a game that you've played? I'll start. Um, it actually came this past Kentucky trip. So, we were, in, we were at Alice Lloyd playing on a terrible field, so small, and it was just, it was a, it was a rough game. Things weren't going well for us in the first half, uh, but we were able to really bring it together in the second half. Um, and the moment for me was we were up, I think, one zero two two zero at this point, and I was able to score. And then the scoring wasn't the cool part. The cool part was being able to go over and celebrate with the guys, and we just absolutely lost it. And it was absolutely incredible. So that moment for me was like, it was just a culmination of working together to get to the point where we were in a com comfortable lead, and then being able to score and celebrate with everyone. It was really cool. Um, one of my favorite moments was my first year here um, when our team was in the regional playoffs and we were tied with um, TBC and so we went into a PK shootout and our team ended up winning that PK shootout and we got to go to nationals. So. Awesome. Cool. All right. I would have to say my freshman year when we had our home tournament at the very beginning and we played Bob Jones, and we went to five sets, but we ended up winning, and it was just insane. Like, awesome. the plays were insane. Yeah, that's crazy. You go all the way, and you win, right? Like, if you lost, you're like, oh, man, we did all of that. But, uh, Jeremiah, did you have one? Yeah. Uh, also, my first year here, we played uh, against GGC, and on paper, there's no reason that we should have won that game. Mm. But um, it was a doubleheader. We lost the first one by one and then ended up winning the second game. And we actually have it on video from the stream of us rushing uh, the center fielder after he caught the final out. And that was just such a fun moment to be a part of. Awesome. That's great. I love those moments. Um, and so what does it mean for you guys as athletes when students come to your games? Uh, it means a lot. Um, having the energy in the crowd just keeps the game fun for us and it keeps us involved in the game. It helps us um, have energy for to play, to keep going. You know, it's hard to get a lot of energy in a yeah. quiet stadium, but people out there cheering, it yeah. makes it a lot more fun for everybody. Yeah, good. It definitely means a lot to us. Um, as someone who doesn't have family nearby to come to games and stuff, 
it's really, it means a lot to me um, to have you guys there supporting. And Bob Jones even wrote about you guys in um, their post-game write-up and said that you guys kept a tense environment the whole game. So, you know, other teams notice it too. So we really appreciate you guys being out there, bringing the energy, having fun, doing chants. Um, so we hope that that continues um, as basketball season starts um, and then on into baseball season. And yeah, so we really appreciate it. I agree. <laughs> if I could just add uh, on top of like, okay, Bob Jones, their social media put it out. I heard it from parents from other teams. Like homecoming weekend, I was at the soccer games and other parents who had traveled for those games were like, wow, these fans are really intense. So I, I think it made them a little nervous. Like what was going to happen uh, if something goes wrong here? Um, so keep it up. Keep coming to the games. Have fun. Uh, dress up tonight, right? That's right. So dress up and have some fun. Now, you guys, uh, volleyball, you have a tournament coming up, right? Um, yes, sir, for regionals. Okay, when is that? How can people come to it, cheer? I'm not sure where it's held at okay. or when. <laughs> it's here. We're it's hosting here. it, right? Yeah, we're hosting it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> right. I don't know when. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and in terms of soccer, you're, do you have other games here or are all your games, home games finished? So we have two more home games, uh, one Thursday at 6 and then Saturday at 11 a.m. So two more chances to come out and support. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, women's soccer is done um, for home games, so that's sad. But there's always next season. All right. And Jeremiah, I am going to come to you. All right. This is a different type of question. This has nothing to do with sports, for the most part. Um, all right, so it's Hallmark Christmas movie season. It is. They've already shown six movies, which is kind of crazy, because it's not even November. Um, and so I want you, I'm going to give you two titles for a movie, and we're going to do, each of you have to do this. You have to tell me which movie you would choose to watch and why. All right? So the first one is Twist the Date Before Christmas or The Five-Year Christmas Party. I would have to choose The Five-Year Christmas Party because that seems like it'd be a little more interesting than The Date Before Christmas. All right, fair enough. Do, do we have agreement on that? Yeah, all right. I think you made a good choice. All right. All right, next. Your choices. Trivia at St. Nick's. Or three wise men and a baby? <laughs> I feel like I have to say three wise men and a baby because that's what Christmas is all about. Um, <laughs> but I would like to see some trivia happening with St. Nick and the elves and everything. I'm assuming that that has nothing to do with the actual wise men and Jesus, though. That's it Hallmark. probably that's true. Has if it's Hallmark, it's probably not. Someone in a small town who falls in love with someone from a big town. Probably so. Um, I'm assuming that's what it has to, <laughs> to do. All right. Are you ready? Yes. A 90s Christmas or holiday touchdown, a Chief's love story. It's a real movie. These are real. These are not chat GPT generated. Um, that's tough. What was the first one? A 90s? A 90s Christmas. 90s Christmas or a holiday touchdown. Jeez. I would probably have to watch the holiday touchdown one simply because I actively listen to Taylor Swift's music, so I feel like <laughs> I, I have to. <laughs> Fair enough. Way to be brave and, and admit what we all do anyways, uh, but he's willing to admit it, so that's good. All right, Sugar Plumbed or Happy Holidays, which I'm assuming it's how like a dog because it's spelled that way, so it probably has to do with puppies and someone from a small town falling in love with someone from the big city. Hmm. I don't know. Happy holidays, probably. All right. Fair Sounds enough. Uh, who doesn't like a good Christmas movie with dogs, right? Very good job. Thank you for being brave and answering my ridiculous questions. Um, all right. So now we're going to switch to something a little more serious. Um, in what ways has playing sports and being an athlete informed your spiritual journey? Who would like to start that one? I can. All right. Go for it. 
it's been interesting because my time here at TFC playing sports has had just many ups and downs when it comes to my performance on the field and then also that then impacts, you know, being having so much time invested into your sport uh, impacting your performance in the classroom. And it's interesting because athletics in general is such a performance-based mindset that you have to have. And when it, it's funny because when it comes to our faith, when it comes to Christianity, that's the exact opposite. It is not by what we do that we are justified. It's by what God has done for us and us putting our faith in him. And so for me, it's just helped me to really realize more and more like whenever I try to do good things to further, you know, my relationship with God, or I try to check off X, Y, and Z to fulfill what I feel like I need to fulfill and not let God down. It's, it's helped me to realize like, you know, even when you are awful at soccer, even when you don't do well in school, even when it seems like you're failing in every aspect, God, he still loves you. You know, Jesus's blood still covers you. And in those moments, it's, it's like, even though you're failing, you know, God still loves you, and that's not going to change. So my standing with God doesn't change regardless of how I do. And I think that's a very helpful reminder for me because I can get so caught up in what I'm doing that I kind of can miss the point of what Jesus has done on the cross for me sometimes. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I think that's, that's uh, yeah, you guys can give it up for him. That's great. So say you've had a bad performance at a game right? That affects us in so many different ways. How do you find that, or what have you found to be helpful for when you're like, I'm, I'm extremely down. I'm frustrated at myself. I'm not doing well right now. My classes, I'm not doing well. Like I had a poor performance here. So what have you found to be helpful to get you out of that? I'm going to probably give a very Sunday school answer here, but something that really helps ground myself is just spending time in prayer. So praying, ooh, that was loud. So praying um, and just like talking to God and giving these things up because so often I'm so caught up in my own head and I'm thinking so much about what I'm doing. It's like, okay, I'm not letting God in. Mm. So whenever I let God in and I, and I pray about these things and I actively give it up to God, then I feel a lot better about it because then it's not just, you know, Josh Lang, this one guy trying to take on the whole world. It's the guy, the, the person, not the guy. The person, not the person. That's also heretical. The, <laughs> <laughs> the supernatural entity that created the whole world then helping me through it. So I think letting God in and not just trying to take on everything by myself is, is a very helpful thing in that instance through prayer. Prayer is a really big thing for me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um... Yeah, there we go. I think you have a fan club. Shout out to the soccer team. Come on. <laughs> so we have a teammate overseas uh, on, our, on our missionary team. She was a soccer player here at TFC. Um, so athletes can go and be missionaries, right? Uh, and serve the Lord in all kinds of different ways. Um, and so she's a missionary with us. Uh, and when she was a student here, because she was a senior when we were freshmen, uh, she had a fan club. They made t-shirts. Uh, and they wore it around and said Michelle Gruber fan club, uh, and it was all guys in her fan club. So uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know if you guys have... Please do not do that. Please. <laughs> For my insanity, do not. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, someone else would like to share how playing sports, being an athlete, has uh, impacted your spiritual journey. Yeah, I think for athletes, it's really easy for us to place our identity in our sport um, and just say, like, I am an athlete and that's who I am. Um, and I think for a long time, I kind of had that, that same idea, that same thought. And even as I'm approaching, you know, my last few games that I will ever play, I've asked myself the question of, like, I'm not going to be an athlete anymore. Who am I? Um, but I think as I've continued playing, um, the Lord has kind of revealed to me that my identity is found in Him, um, no matter what. And it, it goes to, you know, the, the failures that I may make on the field, the mistakes I might make. Those things don't matter um, because my identity is in the Lord. It is not in how good of an athlete I am. It's not in how good my grades are. Um, it's ultimately found in Jesus and who He has said that I am. Um, so I would say that sports has kind of helped me to realize that. It has also helped me to learn to love others well, because when you're on a team with 24, 25 girls, 
everybody's a little different. And so learning to um, love like Christ would love has been a challenge, but it's been a good challenge. And I think that's something that will carry on into my spiritual walk as well as I interact with people that are different than me. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, just to follow up with that, um, do you have any verses that come to mind when you think about identity, who I am in Christ, and you're wrestling through this issue? Are, are there any vo- verses that come to your mind? Well, I would, Roman, so I'll go ahead and say my favorite verse, which is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, and it's, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may know what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Um, and for me, that just tells me what my identity is. Like, my identity, my purpose in life is to praise the Lord, is to renew my mind daily so I'm focusing on the Lord, placing my identity in Him. Um, So that's just been a verse that's been of comfort to me. Yeah, thank you so much. Give it up for her. That's great. Um, Thank you for being vulnerable because those issues of identity go so deep, especially when we've been tied to whatever it is, right? And it's not athlete. It's not always athletics. Uh, So everyone here has different ways in which we tie our identity to things that we do. Um, and so throughout your journey, maybe it was like you're a part of the Minecraft club. I don't know, is that, I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, but whatever it is, like, I'm so involved in that thing that after I leave here, how am I going to wrestle through who I really am? Um, and so thank you for being vulnerable to share that. Good. Uh, yep. Um, <clears throat> well, essentially what sports has become on my spiritual walk is an opportunity for ministry. Um, it's, you have you're around these people all the time, uh, you know, and you have the opportunity to exemplify Christ and pour into them. And I fortunately um, have the opportunity to lead the baseball team to B group this year. Yeah. And God has really encouraged me through that because we're in the second half of the semester now. And since we've started B groups, we've had consistently 20 or more guys showing wow. up to just have fellowship with another, one another, uh, learn about the Lord and just grow closer to God with each other. And as a team, and that's also kind of brought attention to what I want to do hmm. past college. You know, when I hang up playing baseball, what I want to do. And I want my ministry to continue through sports. And so God has just really revealed ways that I can do that. And it's been pretty awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. If I could follow up with that, um, not everyone here is involved in a Barnabas group. Um, and I love the fact that you're leading this Barnabas group. You've got 20 guys engaged on a weekly basis. What would you say is the importance or like kind of the benefit you've seen of being a part of a healthy, active Barnabas group? Um, it's been amazing. You have a lot of guys that look for counsel and a lot of things. And so having that consistent Barnabas group kind of helps open up these opportunities to tackle those difficult questions and be vulnerable with one another and open up about what those struggles are that you're going through and as well as a place to seek prayer and um, just devotion to you and your spiritual growth and having a very healthy and consistent B group it's awesome because we know um, we'd become a family and so we have each other's back we're a group of brothers and there's nothing more encouraging than knowing when I wake up even if my blood family isn't here, I have a family yeah. all around campus that I can go to with yeah. just about anything. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Yeah, give it up. That's, that's so important. Uh, many of us are so far from home. I mean, all the way from Ohio, the great state of Ohio. Um, I can say that I lived in Ohio for a few years. Um, but, you know, you're away from family. Um, and what an opportunity to build those good, strong bonds with people. Um, do you have a way in which being an athlete has formed you? I would definitely say, especially being at Tacoa my first year and this year, I feel like I've grown a lot closer to the Lord because we are constantly praying for each other, over each other. We do our devotionals before every single game, and it's all of us lead it, and it's just I don't know. It's impacted my life. All of the girls have great characters, and they're very uplifting and encouraging, and it's definitely helped get me through some tough times, especially last year. Good. Thank you for for being honest. 
Um, can you press into like, okay, so those devotionals happen kind of before the games, throughout the season. What happens as an athlete when you're not in season um, in terms of that? Well, we usually all still hang out together and we do have our Barnabas group as well. And we just still keep in touch and sometimes we'll have Bible studies together and just still getting to be with each other. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so, different question. Yeah, you guys can clap if you want. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> uh, different question. Uh, how have you exemplified Christ in your sport? So, not just how have you been formed, but how have you shown others uh, Christ? I think another kind of quality of sports that has just been accepted in a lot of ways is this idea of retaliation. So if something happens to you, you do something back. So I've seen it so many times watching soccer games. Like if someone gets fouled, they'll get up and they'll start screaming in the other guy's face um, or something along those lines. And I think especially, I shouldn't say especially, but playing here and in the division we play in, there, I've just seen a lot of people's personalities who seem to be in the moment. They're outside of the sport, they may be super nice, but in the moment they seem very hot-headed and very uh, reactive and very aggressive. And I think a really cool way to show Christ's nature through how I play is by not reacting. I think that's a really big thing. So if someone fouls me or if someone steps on me or like whatever happens and these things, I mean, soccer players do flop, but I promise you whenever someone hits you, it does hurt. <laughs> But um, whenever these things happen, just choosing to not react. Mm. Instead, choosing, as Jesus tells us, to turn the other cheek. And even though I wouldn't say they're my enemy, showing love to them even when they've hurt me. Mm. Um, and that is a really, really, I think, an easy way for us mm. to show Christ whenever we don't do what's expected of us. Mm. Whenever we don't react in a way that the world expects us to react, but instead, in that moment, we have the, the, the level-headedness to be like, you know what, I'm not going to lash out this person. I'm instead just going to get up, and I'm just going to walk away, and I'm not going to say anything. And we have actually seen this when we were playing Piedmont, the refs after the game. We lost the game, but the refs after the game were still like, they were impacted by our sense of discipline mm -hmm. and our lack of fouls and our lack of wanting to be aggressive and wanting to do all these things because Piedmont was not uh, in that moment exemplifying Christ through how they were playing. So, and we were able to do that. So I thought that was really cool. So I would say through that, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, you've got, that's your fan club. That's great. That's great. Uh, was that like an instant process for you? Like when you started, were you already like, yeah, I'm not going to retaliate? Or, or was that a process for you of growth? I would say I'm naturally not a very confrontational person, and I naturally don't react as much to things whenever they happen to me. Um, so I think God, and that's not, I would say that's a process that started well before I came to TFC, um, but God has just been really faithful in my life and in my process of becoming more like uh, Jesus through his spirit to just expose where I think I could have those type types of reactions, and he has really helped me to not be a reactive person, I think, because it, it's, it is very easy in the moment, and there are times, obviously, that I fall short, and there are times where I do react, but um, God has been so faithful to me in that, so I would say it's been kind of a process that hasn't started here, but it's been more of a lifelong thing. Yeah, and I think, honestly, that, that having to stop yourself, like, you feel that, like, oh, I want to, you know, do this. I'm coaching Little League Baseball right now. Well, last night was our last game. And even with the umpires, sometimes you're like, okay, I need to stop. Like, you know, I want to exemplify Christ right here um, for sure. Uh, good. Someone else want to share? Uh, yeah, I do struggle with the hot-headedness just a little bit sometimes. Uh, but that is good. That's a good point. I would say for me, um, I really try to just stay encouraging to all of the girls. I try to keep up with them with not only their volleyball life and what's going on in their head, but also with their current life outside of volleyball. And I just, 
I know if someone has a bad day, I like to even just go get them a little something, bring it to the room and just talk to them for a little bit and it usually makes them feel better, but just constantly trying to make sure that you're keeping up with your players and staying encouraging, not yelling or carrying on and just trying to be their peace when they need it. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. Did you hear that? If you're having a bad day, she'll bring you something from the Odyssey. That's what I heard. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, that's great, though, to be thinking about how are the other people on my team doing um, and how can I show them Christ right now where sometimes they're going to be struggling with those issues of I had a bad performance or I'm just having a bad day. I, I didn't do as well on that test as I wanted. And all of that affects so much of our life, right? Good. Uh, someone else want to share? Or Yeah, I think for me it comes back again to loving my teammates um, well, and it's not a loving them when they, you know, just do well on the field, but loving them when they make the mistake, loving them when they score the goal, loving them, you know, outside of soccer, when they're struggling in classes, whatever that is, um, and maybe we have different beliefs, maybe we have different personalities, but learning to love each other unconditionally um, through that is something that, you know, the, as I said previously, the Lord's been teaching me. Um, and while I'm not perfect at it, um, I hope that that's something that I can continue to do through the rest of the season and then on into life. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, for me personally, the question of exemplifying Christ has been more of a conviction uh, for this year. Um, I knew I was going to lead B group going into the summer, um, but as the semester grew clo closer, it really started to hit me like, oh shoot, I'm about to be a spiritual leader for this team. Yeah. And so that's actually been where I am on my journey is how do I exemplify Christ in the best way on the field? So working through that and having a group of guys to support me in that and even holding me accountable when I do fall short, it's very helpful. And yeah. yeah. Good, thank you. Um, all right, so I'm going to shift it just a little bit. Uh, and I didn't have this, so you're not really prepared. Um, but really quick, I know a lot of athletes, they love listening to music before games. Uh, it kind of gets you pumped up for it. What's your go-to song? And it can't be Tim McGraw by Taylor Swift. I'm sorry. That can't be your pump-up song. All right, so I know I'm throwing you on the spot. Um, I don't know the name of the artist offhand, but it's a, a piece of classical music called Voila. All right. That was unexpected. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Um, I would say Back in Black by ACDC. Okay. <sighs> I, go through, I go through phases. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm exposing myself here. It's fine. Right now, Soccer Practice by Lizzie McAlpine. <laughs> um, this one's a little different, but we all kind of listen to it, but it's Hot Wings from Rio. Okay. All right, so now we have a playlist to pump ourselves up. Uh, I haven't heard of most of those songs. You will not be pumped up listening to my song, I promise. <laughs> Uh, the last question I have for you guys is uh, favorite Bible verse and why that specific verse? And we've already heard uh, your verse. So I, I went back and forth because I was reading Mark last night and there was a verse that stuck out to me uh, that was really, that every time I read is super impactful. But I think for me, it's Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And throughout my life, um, just learning to trust God more, to not rely on myself, and to, and to not worry about things and have anxiety over things, and instead trusting God has been just a really prevalent theme. And that verse always reminds me, don't be scared, you know, don't rely on yourself because ultimately I will fall short, but God never will. And so just continually to rely on him and that verse is a good reminder of that. Um, I'd say my favorite verse is Habakkuk chapter three, verses 17 through 19. And I don't have it memorized, but what it talks about is when you have a season where there's, you're not seeing growth and you're not seeing fruit to yeah. keep relying on the Lord for your strength. Mm -hmm. And I've used that a lot this year, especially as like, I've used it as a theme for, oh yeah. I'll read it. Cool. 
Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fall, and the, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will, will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on high places. Mm. And I use that verse this year for the theme of our B group, because mm. going into sports season, you never know what to expect, win or loss-wise. Um, but it's more so an encouragement to just know that the Lord is your strength, even if you're not seeing yeah. it in your season of life. Yeah, thank you. Um, mine is Thessalonians 5.17, and it's just pray continuously. And it just really speaks to me because, especially when I'm having really hard times, it's hard for me to just get down and pray, or when I'm doing really good, it's really hard for me to, I don't know, just remember because it's like, it's either you pray for him whenever you only need something or when you're doing good, you don't. So it's just constantly praying over everything, no matter what it is. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your honesty uh, with these questions, even putting up with some of my silliness. Uh, I appreciate it. Give it up for them. All right. One more time. Make sure to come out and support them. Uh, I have a few announcements um, before we dismiss. Um, we are hiring as the spiritual formation team um, a communication specialist to work on like the, the social media side, putting slides up, uh, putting those slides together. Uh, so if you're interested, there'll be a slide next week with information on how to apply for that job. Um, also, next week is the Warner Missions Lecture Series. So we'll have Chapel Tuesday morning, but also Tuesday night. Uh, there'll be a chapel Wednesday morning and then Wednesday night as well. Those night chapels will be at the Warner Missions building and not in here. Um, and yeah, come out, support your athletes, have fun doing it, dress up, uh, and make sure you're yelling, but not like mad yelling, right? We also have a game October 31st, Thursday for oh, volleyball go. at 6 p.m. All right, that's tomorrow night at 6 for volleyball. Let me pray and then you guys are dismissed. Father, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for uh, just the way that you work and move and are working in this campus. Uh, Father, I pray that you continue to lead and guide us. Give us a great day in Jesus' name, amen.